early on, I could tell that they just, they just weren't right. At two years old, Noah and Alexis were both diagnosed with cerebral palsy. For me, the main thing is uh, throwing up all the time, and I would throw up 24-7. I just felt terrible. Like, I didn't feel myself whatsoever. Her eyes would roll back in her head, and her hands would crawl up to her chest. I would say, between the two of them, over 80 tests within the first four years of their lives. We reached age five and a half, and Alexis had, had definitely been regressing. This felt like a never-ending roller coaster. It was just super hard seeing them go through it and sometimes not having an answer, not having something that you could work towards because it was all unknown. I came across an article that was titled Death Diagnosis, Sagawa's Dystonia Mimics Cerebral Palsy. One of the common threads that separates this disorder from cerebral palsy is how the patients function at a higher level in the morning and as the day goes on they become more debilitated and that was Alexis. So in 2001, the doctors began to treat the twins with L-DOPA. From the time in which Alexis took her first dose, she was walking with her hands down. She was whistling. We didn't know she could whistle. Late 2009 is when this cough that Alexis had been dealing with for about six years turned into a severe breathing problem. No one can come up with an answer for us. We had the opportunity to have their genome sequenced. They took us through the findings of Noah and Alexis and how they each had a mutation from myself and a mutation from Joe in one gene, but it's a mutation that shows they definitely have dopa responsive dystonia and it shows that they have the rarest of the dystonias. We took the information that we were given back to Noah and Alexis's pediatric neurologist and she started them on a, an amino acid called 5-HTP. After two and a half weeks on the medication, she is not coughing anymore. Her breathing has improved. This research has allowed doctors to better understand the twins disorder and the breathing attacks which Alexis experienced. When you're a parent and you know your kids, but then you're presented with data that then says, these are definitive issues, it's really easy to connect them together. I feel very good and I'm just like, really a happy child now. That's our hope, that kids with rare disease will have this opportunity so that not only can they be diagnosed, but if there's treatment available, that they can be treated. The worry that I had when they were growing up and when they were small is, is no longer exists.